it's been wonderful to be involved with the Hale Eneados thing this year. It's been a real pleasure to me. And a surprise, because uh, this was sprung on me out of the blue by the, this human dynamo over here, Jamie Reed Baxter. And uh, Rob, you would be just the man to come in. Re- oh, uh, well, I don't know. Oh, die, he says, you'll be fine. I heard you read before. And, Aye, well, okay then. And, and then, oh, this, you know, uh, these, these uh, chunks of the, 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 the Neodos that, um, that I've grown quite familiar with, and, and I really enjoy reading them. And, 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 and like any of these, I suppose, poetry being read, poetry is just deed words on the page until somebody breathes life into it and marks it come alive. You know, that's the way poetry, poetry should be heard out loud, you know. It's, I mean, try that. If a favourite poem, instead of just reading it quietly, read it out loud and it has a different sooth to it all together. And um, doing through the history uh, of, of poetry in Scotland, poets in Scotland have I been writing in Scots and... This, this is a legacy that probably began with Gavin Douglas. He is the, the source and the well heed of this, this, this great thing that we hear, this, this Scots language. Um, and there's many, many poets that I look to because, I mean, I'm just a kind of lad of peers, you know. I, I come from a wee village in, in Ayrshire, New Cumnock, and never went to any kind of higher education and had to pick it up as I went along. But I dare say there's other, there's other eh, Ayrshire marker lads of peers that have came to Edinburgh and they didn't know, <laughs> and didn't know bad for their souls. Didn't know bad for their souls. Um, but we, we are the folk that, that, that I look to d- down through the ages. Well, there are the, 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 great, the great medieval markers. Um, Burns, of course, you know, I mean, I could, I could quote Reem, I could quote your reams of Burns out the, out the top of my head. Uh, and Burns and Ferguson were, were, were people who championed the Scots lead and kept it alive in kind of dark times when it was going out of fashion. And it went even further out of fashion. And it tained, it tained a new generation and a new era through the, the, the 19... 20s, where, where Hugh McDermott really to, to, to revive Scots language. And there's many a marker sitting in this room the day, faces that I can, who are fine writers in Scots and use the Scots language. And, and it, 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 it does something to you when, you when you hear it. I mean, it, it goes in your lug and into your brain and into your heart. And it just, it just, there's just something about it that touches us. There's something about it that touches me much more than, 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 than English poetry. Uh, poetry in English or any language is, is, is wonderful. But Scots language is very, very important to me. It's, this is the lead that I grew up with in Ayrshire, leaving uh, in, in, in a wee kind of country village among farmers and uh, the, the folk that still, and miners, folk that still speak Scots every day in the street. I go up to the cooperative to buy my paper or get my pint of milk and you'll hear folk in the queue, who are you getting on the day, Ollian? And, uh, you know, it, it, the language is just still alive there. It's never, ever lost that, 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 that true, true, you know, spark of what Scots language is. Uh, some examples of Scots poetry that I really uh, like. Here's a, a wee extract for, for Hugh McDermott's Gar- Germskoil, um, at Poets School, if you like, where, where he talks about language and, and poetry and, and what it does and, and he was such a great writer in Scots and a, a wee section f- for this great poem Money's the old half human cry I can falls like a revelation on the hearts of men as though the graves were split and the first man grip it the latest with a friendly hand and there's forgotten shibboleths so the Scots he keys to senses look it to us yet Coarse words that shamble through our minds like stoats, sign turning on's muckle in with dunsin emeralds lit. I hear nay he haw, but I mind the day a donkey strunted doon a palm strewn way as Chesterton has sung. Nay we click clack o hoofs, but to my hurt at ains comes back. Jimmy's prayer to gang to heaven with the asses. 
and shambles where nae cattle beast air passes, but I mind who the saft in or the kine licked at Christ's cradle with her canny shine. Hee-haw, click-clack, and cock-a-doodle-doo, will Gabriel and Esperanto cry, or all the world's undemous jargons try? It's no, it's soon, no sense that fathoms a hurt to men, and by my songs are of old Scots I ken, e'en hurts that he nae Scots will dirl right through as nocht else could. For here's a language rings with Dutchies, sesames, and names for nameless things. And that is what Scots language does, you know, it's just this, it has these, uh, thank you. <laughs> these wonderful names for nameless things. Um, Chris Robinson was there the, this morning. I don't, it's, it's Chris, she's not here this afternoon. Uh, a great champion of the Scots language. And I did that thing where I paid £20 to get a Scots word on a diploma. So I own that Scots word. But I think I've got the thing in there. It's a wonderful thing. You can, you can pay £20 and that word becomes yours and you got a diploma. And the, the, the word that I chose was uh, Corrie Newkin. Because I just think it's got just a lovely sooth to it. Corrie Newkin. You know, this about hearing a hubbub in a room and hearing folk are whispering and you can't just quite make out what they're saying. They're, they're kind of whispering away to each other. Corrie Newkin. I just love the Sunni. It just rolls off the tongue. And that was the word I wanted. So that's my word. So you can't hear that, Ian. But there's, <laughs> but there's probably about another 20,000 in the Scottish National Dictionary and you can pay £20 and make that your word. So do that and support the cause. What else do you like? Uh, Robert Gehrig. Uh, I love Robert Gehrig's Southern. Uh, I love his stuff. And uh, one of the great things was, was his um, project of, of our setting the sonnets of G.G. Bailey. Um, and all these sonnets written in a rough, coarse Italian, you know, but, but poems of the city. And the sit say wheel, I think, in, in, in Edinburgh. The, these poems, the uh, uh, bellies, ever set into Scots by the likes of Geiriach. Uh, for instance, here's one of them. Leave and lat leave. This swinish Rome, Christ, what the river's den it's turned to. May God forgive the curse. Hemp rapes and hanging shaws, will ye no hearse this hail one sonsy nest of wicked men? Ye see, by God, who cheatries tain a lane of own good man when he breaks till his earth, as if his shanks were things that winnie burst and weren't made of baptized skin and bane. If I mich be the feather, him that feeds the folk, and had some poors until my neve, I would put back the harns in the heads. It's the food minister I want to deave. With two or three words of counsel that he needs. Sir, what's your name? Gee, pair folk, leave to leave. You know, and that could be, you know, that could be, you could be hearing that, well, you're hearing it the day, and it's still, <laughs> and it's still alive, you know, of me as a, almost 1200 years if it was, it was written. And then I yawned that, where he, the same poet treated by Willie Neal, the great Willie Neal. And there has been, you know, a ploy of it for several years to try and get some money together to put a stain in the marker's coat for Willie Neal. And I would love to see that happen. And hopefully before I'm by, I'll mark that happen. But uh, that's that another tale. Um, but I love, I love these earthly things. And it's one of the things that Scots poetry does. So, Will, there's a, there's a kind of, um, there's a bodiness and an earthiness and a humour, and a humanity about Scots poetry that I feel that English, in a way, doesn't, doesn't he hate. It doesn't have that kind of connection with the people at times. But yet, Scots poetry does that. I don't know why it does that, but it seems to me that it, that it does that. And um, I just love these, these, these uh, poems of Willie Neal. And you can see that I'm playing for time because I've got any fin 
damp poem, but it'll be here somewhere. Where are we? Aye, this scene, I just, I just love this. <clears throat> the Harplin Washer Woman. And you know, you can just see this, this pair downtrodden working class woman that's having to take in washing and laundry to mark ends meet and somebody looking down their knee better and well, saying you should be doing something else with your life. Well what can poor folk do but try and mark ends meet for herself? The Harplin washer woman. Down at my feet mistress, I see ye keek. Their hack it shin o mine, oh what's to say? This mule come on my fit the other day, stoons all the time and won't you let me sleep? A poultice or bashed onions, apple brie, tallow and warm pishins and fried sage. None of them, Mistress Judy, smear the age of the bloody thing till winter's gain, you see. You'll say that I should change to other work. Good counsel, you own. Or maybe stay at home. Aye, find the chance, but I'm on urn to eat. I'll hate to thole it. Washing, shift and sack. What other way? For me to keep a wain. Eh, mistress? Tap to hooren in the street. You know, and, and you know, that could be, that could be some, you know, London hoosen scheme in Scotland today. You know, there's nothing has changed here in the human condition. And that's the great thing that Scots language can do, the power that's in these, these poems. Um... And people writing in Scots poetry, the day, you know, who's writing the day? Well, here's, I love this, this is a, a Tom Leonard poem, and Tom Leonard writes in that wonderful phonetic Scots, this phonetic language where he just spells the words the way they soon. And I love this, you know, a wee short, wee short poem, Moral Philosophy. And of course, this is, a, this is probably, to my mind, this is a conversation in the pub near Closington, with a double, a double whiskey, maybe the fifth double whiskey of the evening, and you're engaged in a deep, you know, moral, philosoph philosophical conversation. And it goes something like this, and I've, I've heard these conversations. I've, I've probably initiated a few of them. <laughs> moral philosophy. This is quite short, so you listen carefully. Moral philosophy. What do you mean, what do you mean? Listen, now listen to me talking to you, right? Eh, uh, hold on, where was I? No, why? What, what's his name? Him with the, you know, you and... Here, here you. You're no even listening. Name of God. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that is just so wonderful and just so true. You know, I've been there. I've been in that conversation. Or even lately. Um, Ferguson statue in the Canning Gate there. Uh, sonnet, James Robertson. James Robertson, one of the stars of uh, uh, the, the Scottish literary firmament right now. They're named the day and mere for Scottish literature than James Robertson. Ferguson statue. You're striding down the Canning Gate, Brent new, and looking like you've never been a war, were never found curled deed upon the straw in bedlam cells. You're 24 and foo, no claret foo, but oh, your cell in life. Rat rhymes and hobbies rattling through your head, a book and horn and hunter's mare to read. The world is yours, at least as far as five. You'd ken and yet you wouldn't ken your tune. Some gains you'd praise, some losses you'd lament. Say muckle change, say muckle I the same. Old Ricky's still as bra beneath the moon. And now we even hae our peer lament. Come home like you, Rob Ferguson. Come home. Lovely thing, lovely thing. And, um, and how he did that, how he, how he, how he get the, the, the old Ricky still as bra beneath the moon, you know, a uh, 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 picture painted in words by Ferguson and, and brings it because he was the, 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 the first marker of the Scots Parliament Robertson and he brings that into the poem there and just so wonderfully crafted you know every line is balanced it's like a, a fine old carriage cloak where every wheel and everything is in balance and it works there I love that kind of artistry um, 
I do a lot of work with Wayne's. G.K. Annan said when Scots, the Scots language comes back, it'll come riding a cock horse. And otherwise, it'll be, you'll hate to do it through the Wayne's and the kids. Um, I got an email the other day, they are telling me that my application to be a, 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 a Scots language coordinator in Scottish Hills had been turned down. So, uh, obviously, that means I've got a lot of folk a lot better than me to do the job. So, maybe that's up, maybe I'm been optimistic there. But um, these are great books for the Wains. I go to them to primary schools and I read these books. Le Blairton Braes and King of the Midden. Great books of poems for wee kids. And these are and a lot of big Wains in here today. So, <laughs> so I'll read you one of these because they're just great fun. And the Wains just love these poems. They're, they love them. And um, for example, here's Nay Fizz Izzy here, who's a wee lassie that likes her ginger to be fizzy. And ginger is just, you know, a general term for lemonade of all types. In fact, there's 300 bottles of it just to <laughs> Tim doing the stank there. Um, so this is the Izzy that likes her ginger to be fizzy, and I got all the wains to, to join in with that, and you pick your favourite can of ginger, and I get them all to shake it, shake your can of ginger, and then three, two, one, you open it, make the noise, and you go, Tsh! and then we read Nay Fizz Izzy. Busy is, he's in a tizzy, cause her ginger isn't he fizzy. She wheaks it and whirls it and wanners it and burrls it, judders it and juggles it and shimmies it and shuggles it, batter and splatter and dillin and whizzin, gain it lally and ten to the dizzin. Doosh, bloosh, bluther and whoosh, now open the cork to try the scoosh. Yuck! What? Your ginger isn't he still no fizzy, is it, is he? <laughs> Aye. Then busy is he, fawz doon dizzy, for trying to mark her ginger fizzy. <laughs> so... You know, this Scots language has been used right now, you know, and, and it comes alive for the kids in the Wains. And I love to hear these things. And these are these itchy coo books. Again, Matthew Fitt and, and, and James Robertson. And that's what the Wains and the skills need. Modern, bright, you know, brilliant books that, that bring Scots language to life and give them a start and they make them realise there's no cringe attached to this. This is, this is your own lead. This is your own language. Use it. Enjoy it. Celebrate it. And I'll finish, I'll go back, full circle. Um, here's a Rab Wilson poem, which is um, going back to antiquity. And this is Horace's Ode, Book 4, Number 7, Diffugere Neves, The Winter Snows Are Fled. And it's after A. E. Houseman. And Houseman famously was teaching the class, and he said to the class, This is the finest work piece of literature handed down to us from antiquity and he read the poem and then he just shut the book and he said there was nothing more to be said and walked out and left the classroom and so I did this and because I didn't hear Latin I'm ashamed to say I had to do it after E. Houseman's version and I wanted to do it in Scots but I couldn't I couldn't capture his rhythm scheme but I have written it in a, kind of a blank verse so there is a, a very much a shape to this and it's the most wonderful, kind of heartbreaking poem about human existence. And I'll just finish with this, and that'll neatly take us back into the classical mode, I think, James. Diffugere Neves, Horace, Odes, Book 4, Number 7, after A. E. Houseman. Snell winter snows are fled, leaves in the shaws hang busket braw, we grass the meadows throng. The roaring spate and dewy lynn grows calm. As seasons turn, the yard bestirs herself. The nymphs and graces three, nay longer feet, dance naked through the woodland's sacred groves. Swift wing the oars, the towmond in its prime, sooks in your lug, how nay to bide for I. Thou follows Cranroch, pressing hard and wear the summer doomed to thee, for in a hint winds hearst, his apples scalt a breed the yard. Then winter ain't again when Nathan steers. What matter that the season's gang ugly, the waxen moon will big them up again, while we were Tullus and were Ancus lig, we gid we are dust and dreams. Torquatus, if the gods in heaven should steek the morrow to the day, what tongue has telt? 
Talk with you can for the inch of hud your fill, ne gruppy air can tack it back again. When thou gangs doon at last the shades among, and minus Steve a sizes wakes you up, ne for can't kin, nor glably gab it tongue, nor douche like ways will serve to bring you back. The nicht in hods Hippolytus gid in true. Diana can he allow some. He mun bide. Though Theseus strains, dark leith thirls Pirithus, even comrades' love can ne'er win us a war. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> And without further ado, me again. <laughs> uh, right, this is a, a, a slightly longer section of the Neodos. Um, this is a, the version that was um, what reworked um, by my late great friend John Law, who was a tremendous loss to the whole Scots language movement. And he, after John sadly died, the challenge was taken up by Dr. Caroline McAfee, who's with us today. And this is the version, this is for their version, the updated version of the Aeneidos. Caroline has flyers about this. I don't know if you've had a chance to distribute them yet. Ah, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, for um, this, I mean, this lasts about, I think, about nine minutes. It's a tale of stirring action. For this, you're all a Roman legion in around about 1 AD. We're sitting in a forest in Germany, like the film Gladiator, and we'll have a big battle the next day. And this is one of the stories the bard would tell the soldiers to fire them up, because this is the tale of a two-man SA suicide mission into the enemy camp to slaughter as many men as they could. And this is Nisus and Euryllus, the two soldiers, the two young soldiers, maybe 20 year old, going in and, and, and killing all these folk and then trying to escape. And in the melee that ensues, it's dark, it's night, one of them gets separated from the other and gets captured and his friend goes back to try and save him. And they, they, they both lost their lives, but no before you know, uh, getting some revenge on the captain, their, their deadly enemy, the Rutilians, and uh, their captain, Volskens. Um, and it's a, a tale of stirring action. From Book 9, Chapter 4. Like as the la empty lion, long unfed, by next tide when all folk are asleep in bed, troubling the fold, foo a silly sheep, the wood rage of his anger is so deep that he constrain it is sick wise to fear. He reaves and he harless here and there the tender beastus that for off of fear o oh, his presence doth neither bleat nor steer. He rummuses with bloody mouth and braise. Say did ye really and nane other ways and nae less slaughter made he in the plain o oh, ire inflamed in his wood brain. For I'm shortly Nisus bade cease and let be, for he perceived it, Eurylus, by his fears, had our great lust to slaughter, and dangers perceived it nocht, whilst war appearing eft. Desist, qua he, this mater mon be left, for the day licht, whilst to us as unfriend approaches near, we may nae longer lend. Great herm is done, enough for blood is shed, throughout our face a patent way is read. And saying thus, they sped them on their way, behind them four up tacking where it lay, money bricked armour, richly dicht they left, cuppies and goblets, forged fair and beft, or massy siller leaning here and there, prood tapestry and nickel precious wear. Save that, Eurylus, we him turst it away, the royal trappers and michty patrols gay, while to swar Romnitus steeds harnessing. Mesapis helm signed for him one or meet, with shining tambret and with crest is he, upon his head a no held a non buckled haze, forth of the tentus way this bunnet they, and free their fees held the sober way. In the meantime, 
300 men folk went with shield and shudder on our captain Volskens. And by this coming war, to the distance near to their host. And as the case did fall, they held fast under this new city wall. Where as on four to what the left on knee, turning their course backward, perceive it, twe, for the bright helm. In the twinkling starny nicht, my eyes you really with beamish shining licht. Well, he unaware perceive it not, alas. And as they scarce were thus espied in case, Volskens the captain, free amid his rout, said, Stand, fellas! And cry us we a shout, What is the cause of your coming? said he, that rides thus in arm it. What ye be, and whither ye are boon? Ye show us plain the tither twa. Made nain answer again, but in the wood is highest at the flicht, assured greatly in the darkness o the night. The horsemen then prick us and fast first sprints to wheel been on pass and turn us went. Baith here and there some umbeset he they the outgates all that shall not win away. The wood was large and rough o bushes rank and o the black acheshire is dim and dank o breerish foo and thick thorn ronis stent. Scarcely a straft road or a dam narrow went therein mich be funden that the main mich pass worth through Eurylus greatly cumbert was. Whit for mitness, thick bushes, branch and brier, and wecht all say the new spilliot gear, there te the hasty onset and the fray made him gang well in the unknown way. Nicest was went, and by this chafe it clear his enemies, unaware what war was his fear. He blent about to say his friends so dear, but all for no, there was nae man him near. You're all, quo he, alas, unhappily, and, and what pair to this land thee left, he I? Or what shall I seek thee? Oh, while away. Therewith this ilk wilsome, perplexed way, backward they held every fit step again through the dern wood, deceitful and in plain, while at the last among rank bushes he erred by the way, because he mich no see. The horse stamping and the din he hears, the wordus or the tackens come to his ears, or them what pursuit him at the back. A little space after gan he tack and heard a scry. Happening what that should be, you really tacking in horns, did he see? Quam the deceitful, unbekent, dern way, the muck nicht, and the hasty dootsome fray betrays it had. That all the meekle rout, ere he was war, him look it round about. Fu great debate he made, as that he mocht. Our city was defence, was all for nocht. What mich then silly nices, dare say? By what force are, are weapons dare he say for to deliver his tender cousin dear? Should he or not adventure himself here and rush amid his enemies in that steed to procure in haste by wounds an honest deed? Up raises he and on his arm backward to throw a javelin or a casting dart and looking upward toward the clear moon, with eightfold voice, thus wise he made his boon. Latonia, goddess of meekle micht, mistress of woods, beauty of starless brick, be thou present and send me thy supplee. Address my work, be directrix, said he. Thus saying, with all force of his body, the grunden dirt, he let de glide and by. The fleeing shaft the next divides, and rich for gain him on the tither sides. It smate Salmonius, shield hung on his back, for in the quarrel all in sunder brack. But where the dint of the rind it riven, say his hurt pipes a sharp, he'd burst it in twa. Doon dushed he and deep thraw, all for lost, the warm blood for buffing on his coast, and for the calder deed his lungest lap, with sobest deep blows, with money clap. His fears looks about on every side to see where fray the grunding dirt did glide. The failing captain vols gains near wood wains, seeing nae man wha mo to get amends. He mich de staunch his ire and soothe his thought for war that through the dartis saw he nocht. 
Thou no octales, quo he that standest by, with thy het blood for bay, twa syllabi, the pain for this mischief, and we that wound he ran upon your all with drawn sword. Then nice is dream for his fellow kind, big out to cry, or oh, wid the new to mind, for nae langer in dern him hide he micht, nor all his friend behold say root for sich. Me, me, ye slay, lo, I am here, he said, that did the deed. Turn hither in me your blade. And so the saw, O oh, ye retalianus. O oh, by my slack like new, your fear is slain as that silly innocent creature, so young, mich nor yet durst in hands to take a thing by heaven's he and all the stands I swear that us behold us where their beam is clear. Sick wordus, said he, for own sick man here, and say strongly his friend and fellow dear, that same as chance he was, beloved he, that rather for his life himself list thee. The sword likely stoke it ere then was glade, throughout his coast, alas, the hair must smert, the milk white breast is pierced it to the hurt. Doon did rush it, Euralis, rick there. The blood brushing out o'er his body fair, and on his elbow leaning a little and wry, his head and house boss he hevel eye, light as the purple fleur and fur or shuch, his stock and twa, smit newly with a pluch, dwine us a wa, as it doth fade or dee, or as the chase bow he dis aft we see, bow down their noppus, suffit on their grain when they be cheered it with the heavy rain. But Nisus, then rush it amid the rout, amongst them all seeking Volskens as stout, and on Volskens are lanely arrestus, and run about with enemies he is prestus, walk here and there and on at every side, him unbeset with work and wound this wide, but neither less them stoutly he assail it. Nocht to move it, e nothing him had ail it, and ere his shining sword about him swung, while at the last, in Volsken's mouth, he flung, as he, for gain him stone, and cried and gaped. Alas, what Ruth was it? He nocht escaped, for he, dean, bereft his fay the life. Stick it and hurt, say aft with spear and knife, fell down above his friend's dead body, were best him like it did to rest and lee. Oh, happy baith, oh, fortunate and ding, gif mine and doubt or style me ony thing, ne'er day nor process or time shall abide that your renown salute, O memory, slide. Thank you.